Hello and uh, welcome back. So today I'm going to go ahead and talk about SQL Server Encryption. So uh, SQL Server Encryption is pretty much important nowadays because companies value um, data encryption. They want to make sure their data is secure. They also want to make sure the company is secure and you as a DBA, you want to make sure your job is secure. Okay, so for this reason, today I'm going to go ahead and talk about a little bit history about SQL Server data encryption, also the components that are involved to encrypt data within SQL Server Engine, and then I'm going to go ahead and show a demo on how, how to uh, configure cell or column level encryption, and then backup encryption, and then always encrypted, and finally database encryption. So let me put get that G out of there. So what I'm going to do in here is, uh, as I said, I'm going to go talk a, a little bit about history of the uh, uh, data encryption, SQL Server data encryption, and then the components. For those of you who already know what is the history and what are the components, you may pause this video and go to the next series, watch one of these, whichever you intend to learn. But for those of you who don't know anything about SQL Server encryption, I would like you to stay along with this video. Now. SQL Server encryption, its history starts with uh, SQL Server 2005, where Microsoft introduced column or cell level encryption. And then back in 2008, they, they introduced TDE, uh, which stands for Transparent Data Encryption. With TDE, we were able to encrypt the whole database. And then back in 2014, Microsoft added more features to the encryption package, and they, and they introduced uh, backup encryption. So this means we are we can take a backup of our database and make sure it is encrypted. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and configure this, but for now, an introduction is enough. And finally, back in 2016, starting SQL Server 2016, Microsoft introduced always encrypted, which we were able to encrypt uh, data while data is in transit as well as at rest. So bear in mind that aside from always encrypted, uh, the, the others feature of SQL Server encryption are able only to encrypt data when data is at rest. But again, always encrypted can encrypt data when data is in transit and as well as at rest. We're going to talk about this a little bit more in detail, but for now that's enough. Okay, so the components that are involved to encrypt data within SQL Server Engine are SMK, which stands for Server Master Key, and this is actually a root key. Every time you start your SQL Server instance, a Service Master Key is generated. This is also protected by a password. You provide a password to create a SMK, and the purpose for this SMK is to encrypt or protect DMK, which stands for Database Master Key. So the Database Master Key, the purpose for that is to protect certificates as well as asymmetric keys. So, and then certificates uh, are digitally signed public keys. We also can have a certificate issued by certificate authorities, but if you don't have any of those, we can create a self-signed certificate. And this is also can be used along with the Database Master Key to encrypt data. Where, okay, as I said, certificates are digitally signed public keys. Asymmetric keys are public private key pairs. So there are two key involved when we are uh, encrypting data with asymmetric key uh, protected by DMK. So one can encrypt data and the other can decrypt data. So since there is more process going on to encrypt and decrypt and involves uh, two keys in there, so you're losing some performance in here. However, you're getting more security because it has two keys. Now, symmetric key, on the other hand, is a single pair key, and that single only pair key can be used to encrypt and decrypt data. However, while you can use this, you gain some performance, but you're losing security. Now, it is your option and the option of your company to focus on which uh, features they want. Do they want performance or they want security? So they can pick up a future and decide themselves. Okay, so one word of caution in here, if once you're creating a symmetric key or either a symmetric or asymmetric or certificate keys, certificates, you make sure you uh, 
keep them and save them outside of SQL Server engine because uh, if somebody can access these keys they can actually store it in their own machine and decrypt your encrypted data and the whole point of encryption will be lost so for that reason make sure you talk to your network team so that they can provide you a secure location where you can store these keys in there and make sure the security is really really restricted in there only authorized individuals should be allowed and that's it okay so i think uh, if you are still not sure about these components i think i have a powerpoint slide in here let me go to slideshow mode and here as i mentioned in here so this might help to remove some of the confusions so as i mentioned the smk which stands for server master key that's a root key and it's and then it's creating every time you uh, uh, starting your sql server engine okay so the smk is the reason for that is to protect dmk okay so the DMK is then DMK stands for database master key, right? So the database master key is, 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 is there to protect or encrypt certificates as well as asymmetric keys. And then we have symmetry key that we can use to encrypt our data and that's it. So we have better protection in here. Now, if it is still confusing for you, what I'm going to do in here is I'm going to go ahead and talk a little bit more on this so basically to put them in simple way uh, your root key is smk so smk is being used to encrypt dmk dmk is used to encrypt asymmetric key as well as dmk is used to certificate and then we have symmetric key and we can use symmetric key to encrypt data now you also can use a combination of certificate with dmk or asymmetric key with dmk to encrypt data now since this symmetry key is a one single key uh, and it, as i mentioned it has less security in order to make it more secure you can encrypt this symmetry key with another symmetry key and then encrypt data so i hope this removes some of the confusion let me go back to ssms now in here uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Uh, um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this session and uh, we'll come back in another session talking about cell or column level encryption. Okay, so for this uh, session, we learned something, uh, some information about history of SQL Server data encryption, as well as we learned something uh, about the components that are involved in. Uh, SQL Server encryption. Uh, so uh, that's it for today. I hope it was uh, informative for you. See you on the next session. I'm going to go ahead and talk about cell or column level encryption.